Uh, now, on to today's program. Very excited uh, to be hosting Alan Piccolo both here for this program as well as in uh, the gallery. Uh, Long Island-based artist Ellen Piccolo has been painting for over 40 years. Trained as a representational painter, Piccolo's main medium is oil paint. For the last 15 years, her work has focused predominantly on waterfront scenes from her travels throughout the United States and Europe, depicting landscapes, architecture, and commercial and recreational vessels. Some of these works are currently on display in the library's Adler Gallery in a, an exhibit entitled On the Waterfront. Uh, we are very happy to have Ellen with us today to discuss her current work and some of her creative process. So please join me in giving a warm welcome to Ellen Piccolo. Can you hear me? Good? Okay. Great. Okay, so let's go. If I, the way that I put this together is I'm going to go through my background first. And then we're going to talk about the work and my influences. So let's go on. Background. Here we go. Born and raised in Brooklyn and grew up with two older brothers. So that tells a lot right there, two older brothers. My mother and father. My father owned a body and fender shop and then became a mailman. After serving in World War II, he remained in the Navy Reserves, and he would draw pictures with me when I was little. My mother did peace goods along with her sister, who lived upstairs, always surrounded by tools, a sewing machine, fabric, notions, and musical instruments. My mother's cousins were the ones who owned the sweatshops that she worked in. Um, my uncle upstairs played the piano and then the organ. Every single day, we heard music coming down from upstairs. So that's where I grew up, basically. That's me. Always had a pen or a pencil in my hand as a child. That is how they kept me busy. High school brought scholarships to the Brooklyn Museum. Oh, wait, next slide. There we go. High school brought scholarships to the Brooklyn Museum, where I studied quite a bit. This is my high school graduation on this side over here with my former boyfriend, who is now my husband. This is Siri. My daughter, I have one child. That's my daughter at her first birthday. This is her at her wedding on the beach. See, the waterfront is very important in my life. I studied at Brooklyn College where I received a BS and a master's degree. And at the time, the faculty was very good. This is kind of a picture of the, some of the faculty that were there. But I studied with people like Leonard Anderson, uh, Philip Pearlstein I studied with when he was there, to name a few. Okay, so this is some student work, which I still have, which is unbelievable because most of my work disappeared, but we'll get to that later. Um, so this is a student piece, another student piece. This one, by the way, is very large. It's about, I would say, five feet long by three feet high. Okay, moving along. Then I had to make a living. So, you know, a master's degree in fine arts is not going to do much for you if you have to earn a living. So, let's go. I'm going to play you a little video here before I go on. Well, let me just read this work. So, I worked as a graphic artist, and then there's a display artist, and finally as an art teacher, which kept me busy for 35 years, all the while continuing to paint and show. So I'm going to play a little video for you now that took place at PS282, and we have a faculty member from PS282 here today, Brad. Um, yeah. So, so this is the outside of the school, and here we go. This is a cow. I put one during the cow parade. It's part of a student contest. And there were cows all over the city. And one student, one was her design, and we painted it. That's my daughter it's in the middle. It's a subway cow. It has a subway going around. Then it got dirty and all over. And every couple of years, I 
we got the same place. We thank you for your joining. But when I retired in 2011, I had to go So that's my 282 experience. Um, did you see this slide? Did I show you this slide? This is a couple of, well, that's a, a workshop on this side is a workshop that I did with the kids in the media lab, which was drawing on iPads at the time. And that was after I had retired, they called me back to do a lesson on Sandy, which I'll talk about that later. Okay. This is a picture of my, me and my students. And every year I would take the kids on trips for a week to this farm in Vermont where they would actually work the farm. And they would feed the animals, clean up after the animals. It was a real working farm experience. And we had a great time. And when I retired, I had other teachers with me. And that was my last day of work, the last time I went to the farm. And so they went home and I stayed there. And then my husband came up and then we went home. Two days later. Then came retirement. This is my retirement party. It was wonderful. And then Sandy came. And I live near the waterfront in Bell Harbor. And unfortunately, it took um, the bottom of my house. And that's where my studios were. And that's where I was keeping a lot of my paintings and such. So you can see some of the paintings drying out on my car that went under water here. This is the pile in front of my house, part of the pile anyway. And I have a couple of neighbors here that can attest to this. They went through the same thing. Um, this pile was, I would say, six to eight feet high and 60 feet long of stuff from the house. And all the while, I was still working at Queens College at this time. I did that also. I forgot to mention that. Um, so I taught art education at Queen, Queens College, and this was my last day at Queens College. We had a little party, and that was the end of that. I, now I'm fully retired. It's wonderful. And here comes the paintings, some of them, some that you don't see out there. This is my painting studio downstairs. We now have downstairs sort of again, um, and at first, in the beginning, I painted a lot of figures. So this is one of the figure paintings that survived the storm. I painted a lot of still life as well. And here's a still life that survived. I have a couple of those. Here's another one that survived. Then I, got, I had a residency while I was in college at Woodstock, New York. And I stayed up there for three months. And I was exposed to landscape. And I started painting landscapes, which I love very much. This is not a painting of Woodstock, from Woodstock, but it's a painting from Florida. But I had, went through this whole landscape phase. And I still go back to it here and there. This is a painting of Fort Tilden, which is near my house, which I talked about before. They knocked these down, which is a shame. But I did a lot of paintings of those buildings. This was in 2019. I went to Spoleto and stayed on, on an olive grove, and it was wonderful. And I went out and painted every day. So these next couple of paintings from, from that, whoops, back up. Okay, so that's, that's, you can see the olive trees, those little uh, light dusty color circles in the front. Those are what olive watches look like. And here's another one. You can see how the farms are, are cut up into land spaces. I also found that gargoyles are very interesting to me. So I went through a gargoyle phase. I am no longer in that phase. But these are some of the gargoyles from Sicily. And the gargoyles are usually underneath um, overhangs. They're holding up like little balconies. There's more. I know this, this guy's pretty scary and ugly, but that's really what he looked like. This was a church in Sicily. 
Okay, now we're going to the waterfront in New York City. So living near the water, I live in Bell Harbor, has always been a big part of my life and became the focus of my work. And it's really, you know, I thought about it. First, I had written down 15 years. It's really been about 30 years that I've been painting the waterfront. Okay. I went through a tug phase and the tugboats turned into fishing boats and other working boats. This is a Moran tug, which I, were my favorite because the red, I like the red ones. There were two companies that made red ones. I painted them a lot. This is a police boat, New York City police boat. And I just love the way it was, the white water pushing in front of it. These are a couple of sailboats from Nova Scotia. And then I got into abstracting. And this is one that's out there on view. And I put it here because I wanted to talk about the focus. And the focus of my work now, pretty much, is this kind of look. And this is, if you look at it, it's a blow up. Right? You're looking right past the boat into another boat. And I just love the way that happens. I don't know if I could do the, no, I can't do this on here. Okay, I was going to try to make it bigger, but I, I guess I can't do it to show you what goes on inside. This is, ah, oh, we skipped one. Let's go back. This is Sicily. And in Sicily, the boats were colorful, but worn down. And, and there was a lot of that muddy looking color. And I like that very much. This is architecture. This is actually, I'm a, I'm a member of uh, Prince Street Gallery in Chelsea, in Manhattan. I'm actually co-director at this point with my other co-director, Stuart Siskind, who I believe is here. Are you here, Stuart? Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, that's a view out the window of our former space. We're now in a different space. Influences and, oh. Let me go down to this before I go there. This is a recent painting that for a nocturne show. And I live part time in Florida. And this was dusk from uh, my cousin's dock looking down the channel. So since Sandy came, I've been spending a lot of time down there. And I'm looking for work for images from down there because it's very difficult to travel these days. So that's that's going. And here come some influences and inspiration. Okay, so here we go. This is a fishing boat. I believe this one was in Ireland. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking fishing boats and I'm focusing on parts of them, which leads to nice abstraction for both painting and quilting, which I'm going to get to later. I'm very much attracted to colorful boats, and it's really hard to find colorful boats around here. Colorful boats around here consist of kayaks. I go kayaking a lot. That's in Jamaica Bay. But then if you look at this, it's taking a piece of the kayaks, and look how exciting that is when you kind of chop it up and, and look at the pieces all put together. I find that fascinating. This. I don't have any notes on this. I guess that's uh, Sicily. That's Palermo. That's what that is. This, I believe, is Palermo also. This was Ireland. Ah, we moved ahead. Here we go. This is Ireland. Uh, I believe that's in Howth, which is outside of Dublin. Now, around New York City, you can find some interesting stuff. These. This is from Red Hook in Brooklyn. These are the water taxis that dock there. This is my neighbor's boat in Florida. That's what I look at at my window. This is the Basque Country. And you, you can see this green boat over here. Everybody see this green boat? There's a painting of a different angle of that green boat outside. And here's another one from Ireland. You can see how I'm kind of chopping up and looking for colors 
and lines to see what, what directions they're going in. I like this image, but it's too much the same. I do love the diagonal, but I don't like that it's all lined up like that. There's another one that I blew up, and actually I did this painting, but it's not in this show. This, I was attracted to that orange sailboat. There's something about that piece of orange in there. And here comes an influence from Florida from my kayaking. I, I go up and down the canals and look for interesting, colorful boats. There's not too many, so you, you have to really look for them in Florida. It seems like the kayaks are the most interesting in color. And here, I put these two, ah, here we go. I put these two images together because I wanted to show what you can do by taking this image and then blowing up a piece of it. So can you see how that makes it much more interesting to look at? Again, Sicily, that's Palermo, Palermo. This is something I made a painting of and it's outside. Um, this is the, actually the photograph. It's in Kinsale in Ireland on the West Coast. This also was in Kinsale, and they, I guess they're very much into orange in that town. This was a sweet little place on the Irish West Coast, and I don't remember the name of the town. We just stopped for a few minutes. But the colors, like a little pink house with the blue and the red, I mean, the colors were just great. This is in Ireland again, and I, I love all the colors that are happening here. Here's another piece of a boat that, that I'm very interested in. This one was kind of like a wreck that was grounded on an island called Inish Moor in the Aran Islands. It's an unbelievable place. If you can get there, I highly recommend it. It's very beautiful. There's another abstraction from a piece of boat, my own. Okay, now we're coming to the quilts. So I've started quilting not all that long ago. Uh, well, 1916, 2016, I got serious about it. This is my quilting studio. And then I was exposed to quilting in high school by my then art teacher, Madeline Appel, who's in here. Hi, Maddie, say hi. <laughs> uh, I played with quilting for many years, making utilitarian quilts. Interaction of shape, color, and movement are important elements in the quilts that I'm doing. And this is a quilt that I took from an image of, you know those cranes in the water that pick up the containers from the boats? And I just loved the way those things interacted, the lines. And so that's where that came from. In 2010, Maddie, now my friend, asked if I wanted to take a class at Quilting by the Lake. And I said to her, I'm only going to take a class if I could take Nancy Crow's class, who is an unbelievable quilter. And I saw she was teaching there. So we took this Nancy Crow class together. And I was like totally over my head in this class. I had no clue what was going on. So I started studying with her. And I've learned so much about composition, you know, abstraction and composition, because I never had an abstract leaning. But this is bringing me into abstraction now, and I'm liking it a lot. It's a lot of fun. And this is one of the quilts I made also. The last, did I show you this one? The last three that I, these three, this, this, and this, did I show you that one? Okay. This is actually fishing boats and nets that were part of a fishing boat. And I kind of changed it around to make my own image. And this quilt and the last two that I just showed you are actually 80 by 80 inches. So they're really, really large. It's really exciting to work on it. This is one of my COVID quilts. And during COVID, there were lines for everything. So here's my line. These are people waiting online. 
and then I added little backgrounds. I like the inter interplay between the rectangular shapes and the curved line shapes. So that's how that came about. Here's another one. This is the last one in that series. It was a whole series of them that I did. Okay, so my quilting influences, which really is the same as my painting influences lately. So now I'm melding the two together so that the painting and the quilting are not all that far apart now. So you can see here the fishing nets and well, this is Tarpon Springs in Florida. This one, I'm going to go back to that. Can you see this, these nets here and these things? This is the quilt I just showed you over here. Can you see it? So here it is again. Okay. This is Red Hook, not Red Hook, New York, Brooklyn. And if you look at this, this was the influence for this quilt. So do you see how I'm taking pieces of places? Okay, here's another influence. I just like the colors and the lines on this. And, you know, if I was to make a quilt out of this or a painting, I might change the colors of the lines because I don't know if I want all that white. This is scrap, scrap metal at my brother's house. He likes scrap, he loves scrap. And it's fascinating to see all the angles and the colors and, and the way that the shapes meet. There's more scrap. I just love his scrap. Now here, the reason I have this one up is because if you start looking at images, what happens to an image when you take the image and then you twist it? So this one is the twisted version of this. And I find it much more interesting on this angle than to look at it straight up and down over here. Here's another one where I twisted it. So if I was to take and make a quilt, I kind of like the way these angles are coming off and not going straight up and down. This is me in my kayak. This is what I do. I ride around in the canals and I take pictures. So it's like I'm always working, even when I'm kayaking. This is some more lines and fishing boats. This is in Tarpon Springs, which is actually a pretty cool place. And here's another piece, which I was thinking about making a quilt out of. So I like all these lines, the way they go up and down. Another boat from Tarpon Springs. Now here, I'm putting something totally odd in here. This is totally different. This is the Guggenheim Museum in Bilbao. And look at that space. Now, can't that be a great quilt? Look at that. It's fabulous. I love it. Okay. Back to the nets. This is like those nets again from uh, fishing boats in talking Springs. Another piece of a boat. That could be a great quilt. Painting. This one, too. Look at all those colors. Isn't that fun? Yeah, we're back to the uh, water taxis in, in um, Red Hook. This is my backyard in Florida. And I like the way that these lines kind of come across here. So I was thinking about doing something with that, and that's why that's there. Here's another one, part of a book. I think this is in Dunedin in Florida. Try to lump Florida together here. Here's some more colors in Florida. I thought were interesting. This is for my kayak. Uh, did I show you that? No. Nah. Did I show you that? That's top and springs. And I, I just kind of like the way all of these two boats interact here. So that might be a painting. And this is from the ferry. I take the ferry a lot. When I go to Manhattan, there's a ferry that goes from my neighborhood. And that's how I like to go there if I can. And I take just from the ferry because I find it fascinating. And that's one of them. Now this, remember I showed you that quilt with the orange lines in it? Okay, so this is part of that structure that I took it from. 
Se eso es. Uh, let's see. That, I think, might be California. That might be California also. This I showed you already. I don't know why it's here again. And this is uh, from the ferry boat. I just love, look how that color and just stands out with these angles, it's just fabulous. Okay, artist influence, who, who do I look at, who do I like? I like Fernand Legere. I like, I like the way he structures his paintings. I like the way the shapes interact with one each other, with each other. I like the movement in his paintings and the color placement in his paint, I just like them. Here's another one that's really intense. It's, it's different than the others, but this is his as well. I mean, just look at all of those things going on. You know, it used to be that I liked, I looked at the Impressionists all the time because that's the direction my painting was going in. And I'm kind of getting out of that head now as I grow. And I'm looking more towards these abstractions with the shapes in them. This is Stuart Davis, and I just love his work also. I, all the shapes and the patterns and the way they interact with each other. Here's another one by him that I like very much. I like Frank Stella a lot. You can say they're all kind of similar in a strange kind of way. Um, this is a big sculpture on the wall. I took these pictures. He had a, a, an exhibit at the, uh, what was that, the Whitney. Is another Frank Stella. And of course, Henry Henri Matisse. There he is. Now look how he plays with his shapes here. There's always like curved line shapes that overlap on top of these straight line shapes. And I just love the way that happens in his work. And I, I do a lot of that and look at a lot of that. Here's another one of his pieces. You can see the same thing. It's all these overlapping shapes that kind of go around. And last but not least, one of my favorites, I just love this piece by Matisse. And that's it. That's who I am and what I think about my whole life. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Ellen. Um, You're welcome. We have been, um, I think for about five months now, we have, uh, invited the gallery artist to come and give a talk here. And I think it really enhances uh, the, the whole exhibit. Um, I know for myself, as I return back out to the gallery, I'm gonna have a new appreciation for your, your artwork that's hung there. And it's uh, just a, a great opportunity for us to understand a little more of your creative process, what's going through your mind as you're uh, taking photos and um, uh, creating your work. So. I'm uh, happy to take any questions. If you have a question, just raise your hand. I'll come around with the mic. And I'm going to check for any questions here uh, in the chat. Um, so in terms of the choice of using oil paints, um, has that been the, just, and obviously you're doing the quilting work as well. Right. Are there any other mediums that you work with and why have you chosen oil painting? That's a good question. Actually, oil, uh, oil I've always been attracted. I've tried acrylics, I've tried watercolor, and I just never liked the feel of it and always went back to the oil. It's just, there's just something about the medium that I, I'm attracted to. I can't put it down. You know, I, I like the way it's solid and it's not opaque. You can make it opaque if you need to, but I like that thick solidness of oil. Um, what was the other part of the question? Uh, were there any other mediums that you... Oh, yeah, the other mediums. Recently, I started playing with collage. So I do love collage now, and I'm going to continue with that. And what I'm doing now, kind of like Matisse, I'm painting my own paper and making my own colors with acrylic paint. And then I am cutting it out into shapes and building these collages. So I would have to say, in terms of the, your representation of color, mm -hmm. um, you seem to be a master at doing that. I think that's certainly what makes the, anyway, the, the painting so enjoyable to look at is the, the colors that you've chosen. So you are you working from photographs primarily in terms of getting that color? Yeah, I, 
I used to work on location, but that became much too difficult, especially after 9-11 and all that. You can't take the paint so easily on the plane anymore and to carry big canvases and such. So now I just pretty much work in the studio. But I do take photographs and then I edit the photographs and look at them. And, you know, I change things here and there. I don't, I don't use them exactly, but sometimes it comes out pretty close. I love, I love your paintings. I'm surprised that you're so small. That, <laughs> you make these, you make these huge pa paintings. Is, I mean, is that um, the mouse that roared? Well, <laughs> the thing is, um, so I'm not an artist, but is that a challenge when you're small to make such huge paintings? It it can be challenging, but I don't even think about it. Quite honestly, when I was young, I could tell you a little story. Uh, I had a little Volkswagen Beetle. And I was making these three by six foot paintings, like three by five. And I had three of them on top of my Volkswagen. I took them out and I was working on location. So I took them into the country, upstate New York. And I leaned them all against the car. That was my easel and I would paint. But that's how I made some things. Remember that, Robert? <laughs> yeah. I thought she was gonna be a little old lady. <laughs> well, I am. <laughs> no, but I'd like to ask this. You didn't mention, you showed us the pictures of your parents and you alluded to their work. Mm -hmm. And I see their work in your art. You do. You? Yeah. Well, that's why I kind of put them in there. You that's know? Why what? That's, that's why what? That's kind of why I put that in there because this is where it comes from in that's me. It's, you know, being exposed to all of that. I always had tools in my hand or, or pencils or pens or something. I was always doing something with my hands when I was little. And the sewing machine, we had like, I lived in a four family house and we had a sewing machine in the basement that everybody in the house, my relatives lived in the house, would use that sewing machine in the basement. You know, it was one of those industrial things. So I always had those things around me. It obviously yeah. sunk in. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm here because of Ellen being a friend of mine, but she's also a former student. So when she talked about her schooling, uh, it just brought back fond memories. Uh, Ellen was one of the strongest, most talented students when she was a high school student. And, um, you know, we, as teachers, sent our students off thinking, well, they'll probably make something of their lives et cetera, et cetera. And I had the good fortune of running into Ellen years later when we had a fender bender. I was leaving the school that I was still teaching in that Ellen had attended. Uh, and I guess she would be a bar or whatever. And I cut her off. And all of a sudden, <laughs> we both come out of our cars, you know, like fire is burning. And then we realize, oh my God, that's my former student. So luckily, because of that little fender bender, we uh, reconnected. You know, she was already an adult. I was still working over at that high school. And uh, we became lifelong friends. And I can't say enough about uh, her work, her friendship, her uh, extraordinary talent, and what a giving, caring person she is. And so coming out here to see her work is like a full circle. And uh, I can't say enough about her. Thank you, Maddie. I didn't put her up to that. Hi, everyone. My name is Loretta. I'm actually friends with uh, Ellen now for 20 years. I have three of her pieces in my home. One, what I asked for her to do for me, and two, which were a gift. Uh, I've seen the transition from landscape. I've seen the quilting being introduced into her new art. And now I'm seeing art pieces that you're creating that you've actually incorporated both. And it's fascinating to see. I have not seen the quilting, the pieces that you're making, but I see the, the art that is influencing your quilting, which is beautiful. Thank you. Very nice. Question about the Matisse influence now. Uh, 
I would say we're using the third point. You know, it's um, 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 yeah. But it's Have just to make paper. It's just, it's just to make paper. Right. Yeah. Have you ever incorporated them with some of the materials to see how different media? You mean okay. incorporate the oil paint with these yeah. papers? Yeah. I find that to be a whole different thing. And I'm I, I, know, I would. I, I would yeah. assume it would be. But yeah. I think it might be interesting. Here you ventured into, I know you love me too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> how you incorporate who knows what's coming down the line? I know. Things are ever evolving. I'd never thought I'd be here. And, you know, seriously. By the way, Ellen was in charge of this college of the school program. Exact. Art education. Fabulous. Just to say. Thanks, Betty. So, um, one question I have for you, Ellen, is sure. that. Uh, Again, I appreciate you sharing what must have been a very traumatic experience with, with Hurricane Sandy. So how did that impact your artwork going forward? Uh, um, yeah, <laughs> it did impact it. It impacted it a lot. I think that's, that might have been the moment where I started going really bright, these bright colors. I think that's when I transitioned from trying to do something in an impressionistic, realistic type of way into abstracting pieces and getting bright. So yeah, that's a good question. I never thought about that. <laughs> so I'm just questions here. Um, so you've been titled the exhibit on the waterfront for I think obvious reasons. Right. What is it that's attracted you to the, the waterfront? There's obviously brilliant colors found right. many places, but what is it about the waterfront? There's just something about the water. I can't get enough of the water. Growing up in Brooklyn as a kid, my mother took me to Coney Island every day in the summer. Every day we went to Washington Baths. I don't know if anybody knows. I'm dating myself here. But if anybody knows what that is. But that's how I spent my summers on the beach. And the beach became very important to me. So now I live near the beach in New York. And I live on the water in Florida. And, you know, I just can't get away from it. Even though Sandy came, I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I need to be there. Right, Loretta? <laughs> My neighbor. <laughs> Ireland for the water, the nautical sea? So. Uh, well, actually, that's an interesting question, too. What brought me to Ireland is my daughter married an Irishman. So <laughs> he's, he's, he's from Dublin. And he's a wonderful guy, and I had to go out there. There was a reason to go out there then, you know. And I fell in love with the place, actually. I'd like to go rent a place on the Aran Islands and just spend some time painting there. Who knows? Back in the day. Oh, the cows. There was yeah. something called the cow parade happening in New York City. Does anybody remember that? Yeah. I, still we do. Oh, I still. Yeah, we'll get the story on the cows <laughs> here. Hold on. I guess I'm the cow expert. Um, it was just, I believe, there were cows that were just really working and asked various lawyers to do the interpretation of them. And I found this out later on. Yeah, yeah. Well, it wasn't, originally, it wasn't my cow. It was my student's cow. Oh, and And, my, you know, we painted her, I helped her. She hardly did anything. But <laughs> we painted we painted the cow with the subway theme on it that she had drawn on paper. And and then it kind of like they said, Do you want to keep this? After it was at the tennis center in Forest Hills, the open, wherever the, where is that? Flushing. Yeah. Yeah. So so it was stationed out there during this whole cow parade. And when it was finished, they said to me, do you want the cow? I said, sure. So we planted the cow in the front yard of the school, which I hope is still there right now. Brad, is it still there? I heard that it had blown down in that big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's, you know, I had fun with that cow. We had fun. A lot of the kids had fun doing it, the graduating classes. Oh, really? Really? 
Oh, that's interesting. Right. It was Atlantic to New York City somehow, and they would distribute it throughout the city, schools and different locations, artists. That's my good friend Angela, by the way. So Ellen, in terms of your yeah. your quilt work, what is that material? Uh, oh, it's cotton. It's cotton fabric, and it's all you know. What I do is I make collage first with my little papers, and then I take this collage and I blow it up, and I cut out the pieces and add seam allowances. So all of those things are pieced together. So this you know they're not it's not sandwiched on top of each other, which is called appliqué. It's not just put on top the shapes and sewn around. You have to figure out how to get these things to work and fit together. And that's part of the challenge for me with the program. One layer, all sewn together. Yeah. How long roughly does a, a, that process take? It could take a while. <laughs> it's a lot longer than painting. Painting comes naturally to me, whereas this is really I have to work at it. So this, this, you know, a month's worth of work to put this together. And then the actual quilting part, which is the sew lines that go down it, which is just standard up and down sewing, I send that out and I have it done. I pay somebody to do that. What's that? Yeah, yeah that's, that's where I'm going, yeah. Do you see more abstraction work in your yeah. future now? Yeah, going more towards that way. But based on some kind of reality, like this tells a story. This is the second one in that series. This one was a line, a depressing line, waiting for groceries at Trader Joe's. OK. And this one, we're starting to come out of COVID a little bit. The line's not so bad, so we're dancing around on the line. So you know, we won't tell little stories. Do those have titles? No, not yet. I, I should, because they're fairly recent, so I haven't. So if anybody else has any <laughs> questions, please raise your hand. Um, I want to let folks know that uh, Ellen's work is going to be on display in the Adler Gallery here through the month of June. Uh, so for those of you out on, on Zoom, if you have an opportunity to come in uh, to enjoy these in person, I certainly encourage you to do so. So Ellen, I really appreciate you uh, not only describing and telling us about your work, but giving us a little bit of a, a viewpoint from, from the artist uh, in terms of what inspires you, uh, what materials you use, and what your creative process is. I always enjoy this opportunity to have an artist talk with us uh, for these 20 minutes. If you have any other questions, raise your hand. I'll, uh, John, is there anything on the chat there? Sure, we have one more. I just want to comment how extraordinary it is that Ellen, as a, a visual artist, painter, uh, then also went into another medium, quilting, which actually was always kind of considered a craft. But there are so many people out there now working in the fabric media medium, uh, both quilting or fiber art. And I think that she's a person in which the work has very deep and important integrity in both media. And, um, I just want to say how I value her ability to make that leap. Because when you think of fiber art, it's never, I don't think it's ever equal to you know, painting as a media, but I think it's getting closer. And Ellen is one of those artists that chose to work in more than one media doing you know, very important work in both. Thank you. Where are the quilts going? Are they going, you know, What do you mean? Uh, the, I mean, the, the, the painting goes on the wall or whatever. Yeah. The oh, these right? go on the wall. Well, these are not bad quilts. This is artwork. Oh, okay. And I intend at my next show at Prince Street Gallery to have a show of quilts. So. Hopefully in the next two years or so, I'll be having a show of just quilts and maybe collages along with that. 
I just want to ask you a question. You mentioned Nathan Moore. Didn't you say it was a beautiful place? Oh, Inishmore. 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 Oh. Did you go there? I just want to know why why is it so beautiful? I've heard of it before. Oh my God! You you take this ferry over. It's this tiny little isle island with barely any cars on it, and you have to rent a bike to get around. And there's sheep and cows and and boats. It's got everything. It's That's just got everything. Beautiful. It's stunning. It's an absolutely stunning, peaceful place. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Sure. Okay. Well, I think we're going to wrap things up. I, again, let's have another round of applause for Ellen Piccolo. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you again, Ellen. Uh, we look forward to seeing more of your great work in the future. And thanks, everybody, for being here. Have a great rest of the weekend.